What up, it's your boy, Mr. Dan Tamari Mellon. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Orlando for Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Paramount Plus released a trailer for Reinventing Elvis, the 68 Comeback, on Tuesday. The documentary premieres August 15th on Paramount Plus. Elvis Presley's 1968 special aired on December 3rd, 1968. Wearing a black leather outfit, Presley won fans back to his music after he had taken time off to act in movies. Reinventing Elvis features a new interview with comeback special director Steve Binder. Binder shared his thoughts on Presley's manager, Colonel Tom Parker. Binder said in the trailer, From the first minute of meeting Parker in my head, I'm saying, I'm not doing this. Reinventing Elvis also featured testimony from Presley experts and audience members from the live telecast. Contemporary recording artists also discussed the impact of the special. Drake Milligan is featured in the trailer. Hootie and the Blowfish frontman Darius Ruckert and music producer Mafio are also in the documentary. John Scheinfeld directed Reinventing Elvis. Spencer Proffer produced Through His Meteor 17, which also produced The Day the Music Died, the story of Don McLean's American Pie. Binder also executive produced with Bruce Gilmore. Netflix is giving a glimpse of the new film Choose Love. The streaming service shared a trailer for the movie Tuesday featuring Laura Morano. Choose Love is an interactive romantic comedy that allows the viewers to decide which path the characters take. The film follows Cami Conway, played by Morano, a recording engineer with her dream job and dear boyfriend, dream boyfriend, played by Scott Michael Foster. The characters question her future after looking back at her former goals and previous relationships. An official synopsis reads... It is just F-O-M-O and the fear of commitment that goes with it? Or is she actually missing on an even better career, perhaps the long-abandoned singing career she once dreamed of? And is Paul the love of her life? The trailer shows Cammy also connecting with Rex Gallier, played by Avon Johia, a sexy British rep- rock star, and Jack Mayna, played by Jordy Weber, her first love, and the one that got away. Choose Love is written and executive produced by Joss Ann McGibbon and directed by Stuart McDonald. The film premieres August 31st on Netflix. Morano is known for playing Allie Dawson on the Disney Channel series Austin and Allie. She also starred in the Netflix romantic comedy The Perfect Date. Drag Race Germany will debut in September. World of Wonder announced a release date for the reality competition series Tuesday. Drag Race Germany will premiere September 5th on WoW Present Plus and also be released on Paramount Plus in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. The show is a new international spinoff of RuPaul's Drag Race that will see drag performers from across Germany, Austria, and uh, Switzerland compete for the title of Germany's first drag superstar. RuPaul executive produces with Fetton Bailey, Randy Barbato, and Tom Campbell. Uh, the original drag race is hosted by RuPaul and completed its 15th season in April. Other international spin-offs include RuPaul's Drag Race UK, RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under, and Drag Race Sweden, which premiered in March. In others, Drag Race News, RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 8 winner Jimbo and runner-up Candy Muse recently launched their own series with WoW Present Plus. In addition, RuPaul's Drag Race Season 6 runner-up Adora Delano came out as a transgender last week. Netflix is giving a glimpse of Disenchantment Season 5. The streaming service shared a trailer for the show's fifth and final season Tuesday. Disenchantment is an animated fantasy series from The Simpsons creator Matt Goring. The show follows being played by Abby Jacobson, a rebellious princess from the fictional kingdom of Dreamland. The teaser revisits Bean's journey throughout the seasons and shows her take on her biggest challenge yet. Uh, The narrator says, every journey, every decision, every victory, every loss, it all leads up to this. So saddle up and drink up. Bean's final misadventure will be the greatest one of all. The voice cast also features Eric Andre, Nat Faxon, John DiMaggio, Tress McNeil, Matt Berry, 
Maurice LaMarche, and Sharon Horgan. Uh, the official synopsis reads, We watched Bean grow from reluctant princess to defiant rebel, and now comes part five. Her journey will finally come to an epic finale featuring the ultimate confrontation against Queen Dagmar, her evil mother. Disenchantment, uh, season five, premieres September 1st on Netflix. Nickelodeon will air a kids and family centric alternative telecast of Super Bowl 58 in 2024. The network announced the broadcast alongside CBS Sports in the press release Tuesday. The alternative telecast will present a nickified, slime filled version of Super Bowl 58 featuring eye popping on field graphics, guest reports, virtual filters, and more. The nickified broadcast will air February 11, 2024, at 6 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Nickelodeon. The regular telecast will air on CBS and all streams on Paramount Plus and MNFL Plus app. Paramount President and CEO Bob Backish said in a statement this will be a historic Super Bowl in las vegas and we're thrilled to partner with the nfl to bring the game to the whole family with the first ever alternate telecast of the super bowl Uh, paramount pictures and nickelodeon president ceno brian robbins added we are unbelievably proud to to partner with cbs sports and the nfl to bring nick's personality and unique visual sensibility to the to the super bowl nickelodeon also announced the nickelodeon nfl nick's mix game an alternative telecast of the Christmas game between the Las Vegas Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Nick 5 version will air December 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Nickelodeon, while the regular broadcast will air on CBS and stream on Paramount+. Plus. Nickelodeon previously aired a special telecast of the NFL wildcard game in 2021. The Sundance Film Festival announced details of the in-person and online screenings at the 2024 event on Tuesday. Festival director Eugene Hernandez also addressed the ongoing Writers Guild and SAG After Actors strike. Uh, Hernandez wrote of the strikes, This is also a challenging moment as artists fight for more equitable entertainment industry. We're more passionate than ever about the importance of celebrating and protecting fiercely independent voices, finding, nurturing, and supporting a diverse roster of art and artists, as well as spotlighting work that can entertain us while it challenges and moves us. This is Hernandez's first year as festival director. He took over to Tatha Jackson, who was tasked with running the festival during the virtual pandemic years. The biggest change for 2024 is that screens will begin at noon, MT, on opening day, January 18th. The festival usually begins at 5 p.m. Virtual screenings begin January 25th, with press and industry gaining virtual access one day earlier. The festival concludes January 28th, with awards announced on January 26th. Programming director Kim Yutani and her team are already reviewing submissions for the festival. The final deadline for filmmakers to submit will be in September. In a related story, union leaders told striking Hollywood uh, writers Tuesday night that they will plan to meet with representatives from studios to discuss restarting negotiations after the first official communication between the two sides since the strike began three months ago. The Writers Guild of America sent an email to members saying that the head of the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, which represents major studios, streaming services, and production companies in negotiations, requested a meeting on Friday to discuss the resumption of contract talks. The email reads, We'll be back in communication with you sometime after the meeting with further information. As we've said before, be wary of rumors. Whenever there is important news to share, you will hear directly from us. The cast and crew of Euphoria are still mourning the death of actor Angus Cloud. Series creator Sam Levinson and cast members Javon Walton and Storm Reid paid tribute to Cloud on social media following his death at the age of 25. Cloud, the actor who played Fezzel Fez O'Neill on the HBO series, died Monday, his family confirmed in a statement. The family said Cloud had recently lost his father and mentioned his struggles with mental health, but did not share a cause of death. In a statement, Levison remembered Cloud as a talented actor who connected with others. He said, There was no one quite like Angus. He was too special, too talented, and way too young to leave us so soon. He also struggled, like many of us, with addiction and depression. I hope he knew how many hearts he touched. I love them. I will 
Rest in peace and God bless his family. Walton, who played Fez's adopted brother, Ashtray O'Neill, on Euphoria, shared a photo on Instagram of himself and Cloud embracing. He captioned the post, Rest easy, brother. Reed, who played Georgia Gia Bennett, the younger sister of Rue Bennett, played by Zendaya, on Euphoria, shared footage of Cloud as Fez on Instagram stories. She wrote, the tears won't just stop. Catherine Arducci, who plays Fez's grandmother in a guest appearance in season two, remember Cloud as a gentle, beautiful soul. She tweeted alongside a photo with the actor, at Angus Cloud, you are a gentle, beautiful soul. You exited too soon. The HBO and Euphoria official Instagram accounts also paid tribute to Cloud. Uh, the statement reads, we're incredibly sad to learn the passing of Angus Cloud. He was immensely talented and a beloved part of the HBO and Euphoria family. We extend our deepest condolences to his friends and families during this difficult time. Euphoria completed its second season on HBO in February 2022 and was renewed for a third season the same month. Production on season three had been delayed due to the ongoing writer's strike. Treat Williams' cause of death has been determined. In a news release shared by People.com on Tuesday, the Vermont State Police confirmed that the medical examiner's office in New York determined that the actor's cause of death was a severe trauma and blood loss following the motorcycle crash in June. State authorities also confirmed Tuesday that the man driving the vehicle that collided with Williams' motorcycle was issued a citation on a charge of grossly negligent operation with death. On June 12, people confirmed that the former Everwood actor had died at the age of 71 hours after a motorcycle accident in Vermont. Um, Barry William, uh, Barry, excuse me, Barry McPherson, uh, Williams' agent, told people he was killed this afternoon. He was making a left or a right, and a car cut him off. I'm just devastated. He was the nicest guy. He was so talented. He was an actor's actor's. Filmmakers loved him. He had been the heart of Hollywood since the 1970s. He was really proud of his performance this year. He's been so happy with the work that I got him. He had a balanced career. Uh, Williams was best known for playing beloved dad Dr. Andrew Brown on Everwood from 2002 to 2006. Serena Williams has a baby girl on the way. The former tennis pro expecting another daughter with her husband, Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian. Williams and Ohanian announced that the sex of their unborn second child in a video Monday that shows the couple celebrating at their baby shower and gender reveal party with family and friends. Ohanian played a prank on Williams where he had her cut into a cake that was plain yellow inside. The crowd then looked up to see it's a girl spelled out in a light show. Uh, Williams also shared photos from the party on Instagram. She captioned the post. The big reveal is now live on YouTube. Did you guess right? Williams and Ohania married in November 2017 and have one child, daughter Olympia, who's five. The couple announced Williams' second pregnancy in May after attending the Met Gala. The fashion doll brand Bratz has launched a new collection with beauty mogul and television personality Kylie Jenner. MGA Entertainment, which owns the Bratz brand, announced a collaboration and press release on Tuesday. The Bratz Times Kylie Collection is Bratz's first ever celebrity collection and reimagines Jenner as a Bratz doll. The design puts inspiration from Jenner's personal style and iconic fashion moments. Jenner said in a statement, I've been a fan of Bratz since childhood and I've always wanted my own Bratz doll. I love every step of the process this past year in creating these dolls alongside the Bratz team. I'm so excited they are here. The Bratz Times Kylie Collection launched Tuesday with the mini Bratz Times Kylie Collectibles. One doll features the purple hair and Versace gown Jenner wore to the 2019 Met Gala, while another recreates the veiled baseball cap and off-white wedding dress that Jenner sported at the 2022 Gala. The full collection will be released over the coming weeks. Uh, Bratz Crave director Jasmine Lorraine said in a statement, This is a seminal moment in Bratz history to join forces with Kylie Jenner as the brand's first ever celebrity collaboration. Kylie truly embodies everything Bratz had stood for since its inception 22 years ago, from being disruptive and rebellious to energetic and expressive. Not only will this collaboration expand Kylie to Kylie's millions of fans, but it will also reach the audiences that grew up with Bratz and are excited to relive the Y2K Bratz lifestyle today. We can be prouder to welcome Kylie into the Bratz family. 
Lizzo has been sued by three former dancers who accused the Grammy winner of sexual harassment and alleged the singer and her production company created a hostile work environment. The civil lawsuit filed Tuesday in the Los Angeles County Supreme uh, uh, Court claims Lizzo pressured the dancers to engage with new performers at a club in Amsterdam and shamed one of them for her weight gain before firing her. Plaintiffs Ariana Davis, Crystal Williams, and Nicole Rodriguez made numerous charges, including sexual, religious, and racial harassments, disability discrimination, assault, and false imprisonment. The legal complaint seeks unspecific damages and names Melissa Vivian Jefferson, known professionally as Lizzo, her production company, Girl, uh, Big Girl Big Touring Inc., and Shirley Quigley, captain of the performer's dance team. Representatives for Lizzo didn't immediately respond to the email seeking comment of the lawsuit. The court filing claims that after performing at a concert in Amsterdam, Lizzo and her crew attended a sexually themed show at a club in the city's notorious Red Light Special, where Lizzo began inviting cast members to take turns touching the nude performers. During the show, Lizzo led a chant pressuring Davis to touch the breasts of one of the nude women performing at the club, the filing states. Um, in, in, in another quotage, finally, the, uh, the chorus became overwhelming and mortified Ms. Davis, uh, quizzed in an attempt to bring an end to the chant, the complaint states. It also states that plaintiffs were aghast with how little regard Lizzo showed for the bodily autonomy of her employees and those around her, especially in the presence of many people whom she employed. Lizzo, who routinely champions body positivity, is also accused of calling out Davis for her weight gain after accusing the dancer of not being committed to her role. Davis was fired in May for recording a meeting during which Lizzo has given out notes to dancers about their performances, according to the complaint. Uh, Quigley, who serves as a judge on the singer's reality show, Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls, is accused in the lawsuit of pushing her Christian beliefs onto dancers. Court filing claims Quigley referred to Davis as a non-believer and told co-workers that no job or no one will stop me from talking about the Lord. Earlier this year, Lizzo won the Grammy for Record of the Year for her song About Damn Time. A global tour supporting her fourth studio album 2022's special wrapped up last month. And finally, California's lieutenant governor and other elected officials on Tuesday urged Taylor Swift to postpone her Los Angeles concerts as a way to stand in solidarity with striking hotel workers. Lieutenant Governor Elena uh, Kulunikis and dozens of state and local politicians signed an open letter telling Swift that her tour makes the region's hotel money with some pro proprieties doubling and tripling what they charge because you are coming. Meanwhile, the letter says many housekeepers and other hotel workers can't afford to live close to their jobs and some sleep in their cars and risking losing their homes. They wrote, hotel workers are fine for their lives. They're fine for a living wage. They have gone on strike. Now they're asking for your support. Stand with hotel workers and postpone your concerts. Starting Thursday, Swift is scheduled to perform six sold out shows at Sophie Stadium near Los Angeles. Her representatives didn't immediately respond to a letter seeking comment on the letter. Uh, Unite Here Local 11, which represents some 30,000 hotel workers, is negotiating for better wages, improved health care benefits, higher pension contributions, and less strenuous workloads. Contracts expire last month as more than 60 hotels, including properties, uh, properties owned by major chains such as Marriott and Hilton. Kunalakis, a Democrat who said she will run for governor in 2026, is the top official in the state to make the plea. She attended Swift's ERA's tour in Santa Clara, California, according to Politico. Others who signed the letter included the mayors of several cities, Assembly Majority Leader Isaac Bryan and State Senators Dave Meir and Mary Elena DiRazzo. And as the entertainment report for Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.